let's talk uh, a bit about uh, a boy called Beck. So I've got all kinds of questions about that one as well. Um, but uh, per my promise, I will not summarize your book. So what does esteemed audience need to know? <laughs> like they don't know. What do they need to know about a boy called Bat? A boy called Bat is a story about a kid with autism. Uh, his name is Bixby Alexander Tam, Bat for short, who um, whose mother is a veterinarian, and one day she brings home an orphan skunk kit and he becomes determined to keep and care for it. And it's the story of him learning to become the world's best scared, uh, skunk caretaker, and at the same time, um, forming and uh, deepening relationships with the humans in his life as well. And I think one of the things that makes Bat so successful is also, it's a book full of adults too, who are very interested in keeping and caring for Bat. Um, and so I think it has, a unique charm of, of a lot of interesting characters who are very interested in doing right by one another, um, which maybe doesn't sound like a great setup for uh, a conflict, but yeah, that, that is not the conflict of the book. Nope, there's, there's plenty. <laughs> there's, there's a never ending shortage of conflict in, in Bat's world. Um, possibly a dumb question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. When you have a book that, that blows up and you become a little bit known for, this is the uh, Lana K. Arnold brand, is a boy called Bat. Is that at all bothersome when you're like, well, no, I also want to want to tell werewolf stories. Are you just happy that somebody showed up and great, I, I, I love that book too, so I'm glad you do as well? I think a boy called Bat and just Harriet, those books contain the facets of me of which I am the most purely proud, um, the parts of myself that I love the most. I'm in all my books, but sometimes what I'm exploring, especially my YA, is the parts of me that unsettle me or disturb me or gross me out uh, or fill me with shame. But the books that I write for in this, you know, these 20,000, 25,000 word younger middle grade novels, for some reason, allow me access to the part of me that is, of which I am the most proud. Um, the way I care and keep for the people I love, the way I parent, the way I take care of animals, um, the way I nurture. And so if I am known just for a boy called Bat even, uh, I will be just deeply proud um, that the world has seen that part of me and loves it. With a boy called Bat, um, <clears throat> I'm sure you know that, uh, I know you know, that if you've met a person with autism, you've met a person with autism. It's a big, huge, wide um, uh, spectrum. Um, there are all kinds of behaviors on it. When you sit down to create a character with autism, how much time do you spend, like, focusing on the parts of him that would be determined by autism and then how much time do you spend making sure you're differentiating and creating that? And how do you create a character like that? Well, I think I don't separate out the parts of him that mark him as a person with autism versus the parts that mark him as a person who loves animals or a person with a sibling or a person who has sometimes contentious relationship with his dad or a person who loves research or a person who has a spare bed just in case someday a friend will want to spend the night. Um, I, he's a whole person. And so all of it is present in every, every turn and every choice. I spent a lot of time researching. I learned a lot about, uh, inclusive classrooms when I wrote a book called Bat because I wanted a school that was, uh, had an inclusive classroom where kids who are neuroatypical are shared in shared space with neurotypical kids. Um, I base a lot of the way Mr. Grayson teaches and the way uh, his mom, Valerie Tam, parents on um, the way I believe children should be treated and the way I try to teach, treat children both as a teacher when I was in the classroom and as a parent and just as a human walking alongside other humans who happen to be younger and more vulnerable. Um, and I learned a lot about uh, autism. I knew a lot about autism already uh, for various reasons going into writing of the book, but I of course spent a lot more time doing even more research. Um, I learned about uh, skunk husbandry. Um, I don't know if you know this, maybe you do. Dr. Uh, Jerry Dragu, in addition to being a character in my book, is a real skunk scientist. Did you know that? I know because I read it in your book. Yeah, he's a real person. And uh, I got to know him and uh, learn about the care and keeping of skunks from his perspective. So, I mean, I don't, 
just like that, how I kind of laughed when you, when you read how many hours I'd said I spent doing various parts of my author life. And I am remembering now, like, I think I just figured I had to come up with numbers. And so I said those numbers, uh, but their estimates, I don't know. I think the same is true with this question is um, that is a whole person. And so therefore everything about him is important. And none of it, I think necessarily takes precedence over other parts. In revision, I spent some time and we had, uh, we had uh, an author with autism read the book and give us input. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't falling into harmful tropes uh, that I couldn't see. Um, and um, I had in a couple of spaces and we revised. Um, and so that, that's, the, I guess, sort of the craft and business side of things as opposed to the art. So, um, yeah, did I answer the question? You did, and I think maybe the question itself was not um, asked as well as I would have liked. <laughs> Alas, that should be the real name of the show. The, <laughs> the, the question that if I'd had 20 drafts to revise would have been would have been about right, but uh, live and on the fly, yeah, we'll see. Um, but what came to you first? Did, I mean, did Bat come to you as a character whole, or did you know this is a boy who loves a skunk? Let's find out more about that. How much of a character did you have going in, and how much do you discover as you're going along? So in the book Far From Fair, there's a character named Rex, who is the younger brother of the main character, Odette Zazowski. And he, uh, although it's not named on the page, is a character uh, with autism. And he falls a little bit into the trope because of the position from which the story is told of being the younger brother who causes problems for the main character, you know, the character with autism who causes problems for the neurotypical character, uh, which with some distance, I can see, um, well, I think, I don't, I, I think Rex is a full character and I hope that people who encounter that book feel that too, but everyone's going to have their own experiences. But when I sat down to write a boy called Bat, I knew I wanted to write a book, um, it's centered at uh, the younger brother type character, the kid who is the autistic character, who is the now in the driver's seat of the story, who's, who's the main character as opposed to a secondary character. So I knew that it was gonna be a, a kid with autism. I knew he was gonna be a younger brother and uh, I knew he was gonna be super into animals. Those were the things I knew first about him. His name came very early too. My brother's name is Zach. It's spelled Z-A-K, but it's actually initials. His name is actually Z Anton Kuczynski. The K is where my, my K is from. And we've always called him by his initials, Zach. Now, remember, I told you my job is to notice things and then ask what if. In that case, I remembered, you know, which is a type of noticing, that my brother's name was unusual. And I thought, well, what if I had a character who had an initial name too? What would his name be? And I came up with Bixby Alexander Tam. Alexander, after my father, who recently died, um, Bixby, I didn't realize it at the time, so we should follow ourselves. I think it's named after the neighborhood I lived in called Bixby Knowles when I was nine years old. Um, but I didn't even think about that. I thought I just made up the name Bixby. Uh, but of course I didn't, right? The back of my brain tossed it up like a, like a dirt clod uh, that I took and used. And Tam um, was his last name. So um, his name came. And then I thought, well, what kind of kid would want to be called Bat? He's like, well, he's got to really love animals. So that all sort of came together for me. Uh, pretty early on. Um, and that's your way in, right? Because I think we've established as you're petting a cat, as we're talking, you love animals, right? I do. Yeah. I almost always am. Oh, great. Now this is Phoebe. She's my, um, my giantess. I almost always have an animal on or next to me. Um, they soothe me and they give my day structure and they um, give me an opportunity to, um, to be a caretaker um, in a way that feels really important to me. So yes, it was no question to me that there would be animals at the center of Boyle Combat. In fact, there are animals, now that I'm realizing it, almost every book I write, um, relationships between humans and animals are one of the through lines in, in almost all of my books. <laughs>